What's occurring behind me, milk being delivered to Sartori Cheese, is both everyday and exceptional. It's milk from a fourth generation family dairy farm being delivered to fourth generation cheesemakers here at Sartori. I've come to meet master cheesemaker Mike Matuszewski and Jim Sartori to find out how and why their cheeses remained some of the best in the world. Mike! Kyle. How are you? Great. Good to see you. Good to see you again too. Thanks for having me out to Sartori. Oh, no problem. Silver Dollar Tour. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a lot of cheeses that I really like. I'm kind of hoping at least one of my favorites though you're making today. Well, you're lucky today. We're doing both Servecchio and Bellavitano. Oh, that's like the double crown. You got it. Yeah. Wow, you knew I was coming, or this is just uh, kind of yeah, this is just for you. <laughs> so I like to tell myself. I also like to tell myself that I don't have to wear a hairnet every time I visit a uh, master cheesemaker, but I, I know that's not true. I live in a hairnet. Yeah. I never have a bad hair day. Let's tour. You ready to go? Yeah, I Let's am. Let's go. Let's go have <laughs> some fun. I feel like I'm going into the bat cave. Okay, now upstairs, we've taken the milk, we've added starter, yeah. very key, uh, rennet, mm -hmm. we've coagulated that milk, then we cut it and cooked it, and now we have curds and whey. We're downstairs, this is where we're gonna take the curds and whey and create a wheel of cheese. So this is our drain table. Wow. And what we're doing here is, okay, we have curd, a lot of curd, what we don't want at this point is whey, but we have to take our time in removing it. Mm -hmm. And this is edible. Right this now. is extremely edible. And what I look for, sweet, actually rather bland. I don't want any off flavors. Uh -huh. Now in 24 months, this will be Sarvecchio. Hard to believe. We'll be drawing all this way off. Eventually it'll get to a point where we can salt it, and then moving on to the hooping step where we're putting it into form. So we got a whole heap of curds coming up the conveyor belt. And I know in the old days, these would have been metal hoops, right? It would have been metal hoops, uh, stainless steel bucket. You bucket it out 25 pounds at a time. You know, you're lifting, you know, 30 plus pounds. We're gonna, we take 4,000 pounds of cheese and get it into a hoop in 20 minutes. So this, putting it into hoops, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but every cheese, no matter what style, this is part of the process. Every cheese, no matter what style, needs to be formed in some manner. Yeah. Now what they're doing right now is taking cheese that was hooped 25 minutes ago and they're going to turn it, and we turn every wheel. What that means is you're going to take that wheel out of that form, take that Delnet rag off, reposition it, put that wheel back in, fold it up nice and neat, and press it some more. The number of steps just in the first part of cheese making is mind boggling. But it's what we do. We don't even think about that. It's just what we do. <laughs> so what's going on here? This is cheese that was made yesterday. So what, uh, what style will this be? This is Bella Vitano, right? This is Bella Vitano. Okay. We let our cheese, you know, develop at the right pace. So what we're doing right now is we're removing that Delnet, that rag, and we're gonna give that a light trim because there's a little bit of rough edges. We're gonna put it in this cart. When that cart is full, we'll take it, weigh it and take it to the brine room and uh, Tim here will throw it in. Carry on. Carry on. Thank you, gentlemen. This is our brine room. This is one of the most unique aspects of our particular process. Uh -huh. These brines are over 50 years old. It's uh, very important that we take care of them. Uh, what happens here is we take really soft cheese and then we put it in the brine and it's more about than just salt water. It's about, uh, since they've been around forever, this cheese our cheese today is touching cheese that's gone in here 50 years ago. So this is the magic elixir. It's very much so. It's a, it is so key to our flavor development. We've played with fresh brine. No, it doesn't work. What's going on here is we're pulling the cheese out of the brine. 
several days ago we put it in. At that point it was soft and it didn't have a whole lot of salt. Now what's going on in the brine? We're pulling salt in, pushing whey and a little cheese bits out, and we're making a really hard rind which is gonna help protect that cheese. Most Parmesans are really salty. What we find with ours, we have a sweetness. We can only achieve it by controlling that salt, bringing in the right milk, you know, just doing everything just so. So where are we in the process now? Okay, this cheese was made several days ago, and now we we're pulling it out of the brine, mm -hmm. and we're going to run it, you know, wash it again, and then take it into the cure room, okay. where it's gonna spend uh, at least another month. Salty bath, clean bath, carnival ride, and a little rest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A, everybody needs a rest. Who doesn't? A good month of uh, holiday. Yeah, a good month of holiday, a very necessary holiday. Yeah, nice. Where are you taking me, Mike? Uh, a special place. All right, I'm ready. You want me to pull Would this chain? Would you mind pulling that chain? I, with some trepidation. Always. Welcome to a large cure room. Whoa. A little bit of cheese? Yeah. You know what would go great with this is an enormous, and I mean like a story and a half tall pile of cracker crumbs. I'd rather have a beer. <laughs> to each his own. So this is a lot of cheese curing. A lot of cheese. We're drying cheese, mm -hmm. which is really important part of our process to get it down to the right moisture. And this is the only opportunity it's going to have to breathe oxygen for a very long time. It's cool and it's, and it's drying here. Yeah. I see uh, some wheels with holes in them and cutouts. They look like enormous angry Pac-Men. What, what is that telling you guys when you're checking? We want to make sure we have the right amount of moisture, the right amount of fat, the right amount of salt. We're also testing for uh, you know, the, the micro world to make sure we have a safe and healthy product. And then you know, you, you it's going to be great cheese. You just can't guess. No, no, not with this much cheese. No. Yeah. The only thing I want to guess about, it's like, you know, what great, I don't know, toasted bread and glass of wine I'm going to put over there. Well, it's going to be a while, <laughs> about two I, years. I'm willing to wait. It'll be worth it. You like wine? I, I do like wine. I got something to show you. <laughs> OK. I love a good that glass. One. Oh, we'll get you more than a glass. <laughs> Welcome to the soaking room. I, I love it. It smells of red wine, which is one of my favorite scents. That it does. I love red wine. OD too. Merlot. Merlot, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit more about this. Well, this is a, a process that was done by trial and error. Took Bellavitano cheese, really nice, sweet, fruity cheese. Merlot, nice wine. They go together. When we started, it was just a single wheel. And then it was three wheels at a time, and now it's all of this. So how many wheels of Bella Vitano are we currently soaking in this room? Probably 500 wow. in this room. Yeah. Mike, you guys are different in a lot of ways, but one of the things I've always loved is that you're not, you're not scared to go out on an edge a little bit. I play a lot, and there's really, nothing's really off limits. But, you know, inspiration comes from, you know, people will suggest things, or I'm out traveling, a lot of ideas, you know, I'm out with my kids, we're walking through the supermarket aisle, I see an idea. Yeah. And it's just like, ah, a what if. Always be open. Yeah. I think it's really important to work with what you love, because there's no fun in making something you don't like. Which part of the tour is this? Because it looks delicious and after, you know. This is the best part of the tour. The yeah. tour. Yeah, the final product. You get to taste it. Nice, nice. Thank you, by the way. You're a, very welcome. True privilege. I know we kind of soaked up some of your day, but um, you make amazing product. Thank you. It's it's always great fun to take people around. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to the Jim Sartori right Come here. on. Hey, how are right you? Yeah, nice welcome. to meet you. Wait, let me take the goggles <laughs> off and the hairnet. <laughs> wow, this is an honor. So there's variety of cheeses here. The room's just littered with uh, awards. I mean, this is your family's history writ large across four generations. 
And I know that you probably can't have a favorite, but uh, do you have a favorite? <laughs> well, it's like my children. They're all my favorites. <laughs> That's very diplomatic, but... I do have Cervecchio. I yeah. I admit, Cervecchio Parmesan uh, is my favorite. I mean, that's the history, the core of your family, right? It is. Cervecchio Parmesan is one of the most decorated cheese actually in the country. Mm -hmm. And it really is our standard uh, product that we feel um, has provided the highest uh, awards and the highest flavor. It's, we're very proud of it. It's just, it's just so sublimely good. So this is really your heritage. This is where your, is. your grandfather started. This is what you guys play forward every day. And we made Parmesan cheese in May of 1939, right from the start, and we're now celebrating 75 years. That's, that's amazing. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, pretty cool. So this plant in Anago is special because it's been handed from party to party. First the brewery, and then Kraft bought it, but then something terrific happened after, after, uh, after that. Right. Kraft tried to close this plant in 1993, mm -hmm. and the team members, as we call them, uh, uh, gathered together and had an opportunity to buy the plant. So the team members here at Antigo owned it from 93 till 2006 when Sartori came in and uh, we had known the cheese for many years so it was a natural marriage for Sartori and Antigo. I want to say that's a really Midwestern thing to do. Just know we'll determine our destiny in this. We're, we're really good at what we do and we love it and uh, some decision made in an office a long way from here won't decide how happy we're gonna be. Right, yeah. it's, it's been a wonderful marriage and the quality of uh, craftsmanship that the team members have here is uh, world class. Yeah, well it's a, it's a privilege to be a Wisconsinite and have you guys produce and, and cherish this, this type of, our own state's terroir, basically the people, the cows, and, and your family, there's a lot of families like yours that maybe in the second or gen, third generation would have, for lack of a better term, just cashed out. Yeah. But, and, and of course now we're in actually the fourth generation, so yeah. uh, and my hopes are to go to the fifth. We, we love Wisconsin, we love the people, and uh, we love making world-class cheese. If you need any convincing for future generations, have them call me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, buddy. <laughs>